Alrighty, well, happy Thursday. You made it. Um, our schedule's a little bit off here because the project due date got moved. So we're not doing project two review next week, right? Because we just got project two yes, uh, Tuesday, not yesterday. I know what day it is. Um, so I'll get bumped a little bit, uh, probably till 319 or so. It should work out pretty well. The midterm review won't be too long. Um, not. I guess we can do, yeah, we can do the project three from 319 to 42. I still want to talk about the final group project around 328 to give you about a whole month to work on it or so. Um, so with, we'll have just a tiny bit of overlap there. So really, if you don't even start to the second, you still have three whole weeks to work on it, um, which should be pretty reasonable. Uh, we've got a little bit of work time in the schedule here, and we are going to be doing this one, right? This one's uh, I thought this one had a partner. This one partner optional? Why can't I remember here? Yeah, okay, so it's not required to be a group project. So ideally you'd work in a pair. Um, I think that usually works out pretty well. Uh, gives you someone you can bounce ideas off of um, and comes out turns out pretty good. So um, pair optional, but you know, three weeks or so Plus a little time to, to think about it with the partner should be pretty good. Um, and then our final exam spot slot starting at eight in the morning. Oh, gross! That's really early. Do they really you really take exams like at eight in the morning? It seems like a terrible idea. Unless you're a morning person, I guess then it's fantastic. But I would probably fail an exam at eight in the morning. Um, that sounds no fun. But we'll do presentations instead. There's no exam, so if your code runs does all the things, you should feel pretty good about it. All you gotta do is show up, run your code. Um, everyone will be doing the same project, so it's a little boring to see it a bunch of times, um, but it's, it's low stress at that point, so um, should be a lot of fun. It's usually the, the goal here, so it's not high, high pressure demos or anything like that. I'm just showing what yours looks like, okay? Um, so templates today, and then Next week, we can move into linked lists. This should be pretty good. So templates is not the largest section in Zybooks here, but the idea of templates is super weird. So it's it's a thing that we've never really considered what we would do with it before. This is another tool in our toolkit as we go here. So let me build uh, another app here. So let's call this, what week are we in here? Week nine for templates. Week nine templates. Excuse me. So we've actually used templates before without understanding that what a template really is here. So when we've used vectors, include vector, vector, and really any of those, the STL, the standard template library, are templates. We've talked about the standard template library before, but never like looked at how would we do it ourselves. So now this is the chance to see what would this look like on our own. So these are all the, the containers, the, the, all those containers in the standard template library. So when we create a vector, right, we say, hey, I want a vector of a specific type. Hey, maybe I want a vector of integers here, and then I would have my numbers, right? Uh, i got to use my namespace. Namespace standard. Okay, so now I get my vector of numbers. Or if we wanted to get fancy, right, we could have a class in here for, you know, we had student, I think, in one point here. It's fine. We can have our vector of type student, right? Or we could have pairs of students and integers and any, any of those sort of combinations that we want to, we could go crazy with. And I think, what was that, the lab we had four levels deep, right? Uh, I think I've got that code out here. Yes, 200. Then I start, I think I started that lab code. Is it lab six? No, that was the board. No, nope. shoot, I thought we had in containers. How far did we get with containers? We had a pair of string string. No, didn't we get, I thought we had something, yeah. A, a, deck of pair of string of vector right like so you can put a bunch of things inside of another so and all of this works because this happens to be one particular type 
So when we say type, it's, hey, what, what is it specifically? Well, it's a vector of a given type. That's treated as one type. So it can be one item in a pair. Right? This was the pair. So we had a string and then vector of strings. So vector of strings was the other type that was given to pair. So all of this works because they are templates. So a template is really just a fancy way of us saying, I don't know what type we're going to use. I'm going to let you define that. So we can create a function and we say, hey, this is a template function and I'm going to have a type name. Now, I, I don't like the books the type here. That's okay. So I'm, I usually use T. So T is pretty common for a template type. So we could write some sort of function if we want here. We'll have bool, um, I don't know, is larger. And we want to say this is a template function of type name T. So is larger, we're going to say the type you need to give the is larger function is T for first and another T for second. So when I say this is a template function, you get to define what the type you're going to give it is. So like when you create a vector, you say it's a vector of type student. We use the same um, greater than, less than brackets, angle brackets. I forget our, our term for these here, right? So we're saying this is a vector of student. So I can use my is larger function of a given type. So if I have two integers, I could say is larger of type. What is my type here? Well, this could be of type integer here. Right? And then I will give it two different integers because I declare it of type t. I need to give it two things that are of type t. So I can give it, you know, four and six or something. And that's, I'll just see out whatever we get back from here. Not the most interesting function, but that's okay. We're just going to see which one's larger. So inside of the function now, I don't know what t is. This is where it gets, starts to get really weird. So when we define template functions, we're letting the person who uses my function tell me what the type is. I have no idea what the type actually is anymore. I'm just going to return first is greater than second. Second. Sure. So I've got a first value and a second value. They're still of whatever type I declare it, they have to be one of those. Now this doesn't seem like it's going to be super useful here, right? But once we start doing interesting stuff with polymorphism, it gets to be a little bit more interesting. So when I have a class student that has something here, and maybe then I have a class for, I don't know, say guest student, right? That extends student, you know, public student here. So guest student can be, I don't know, maybe they're gonna have a string for their home school, or something like that, right? So guest students will just take a class or two here, but they have a different university that they're gonna transfer their credits to, something like that. Right, um, sure, and students have all of their values, I don't know, um, number and string for name and whatever other nonsense we wanted in here, right? We could have uh, include string. So now, because of polymorphism, when I want to use my is larger function and I give it a type of T, guest student is a type of student. Right? It has that is a relationship here. So I can use the is larger here see out is large which doesn't really make a lot of sense at this point but that's okay I say hey this is an is larger of type student and I'm going to give it two different students I might have a student for a student and then a guest student second student or I don't know what's called this one guest student right and I can compare those two using my template function my first student and my guest student because both of them look like type student so we're kind of taking advantage of all these ideas that we've looked at. So if a guest student is a student, then I can use it in a template function that is of type student, because it fits, right? Now again, is larger is not the most interesting thing here, just comparing greater than or less than, but that's okay. You know, we could, we could have other sorts of functions later. Um, so if it fits, you can give it as an argument. Right? Again, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to use these here. Like this one is the find the smallest of three, sure, of given integers, chars, and strings, and anything we want here. Whatever type we tell it, we can fit in here. Now, I've got no idea how to compare if one student is greater than another student or not. If we wanted to have a function here, we could override the less than or greater than operator. 
that might be useful, right? And it's probably all based on their ID number or something, or I don't know, you want to compare yourselves by GPA or whatever we want to come up with for these comparisons, we could if we define that in our class. So if it's useful for us, we could go do it. We're just kind of playing with some of the syntax here so we can fit it here. So whatever type we declare it, the arguments have to be of that type. And that's our type functions. It's really all it is. So that's a template function. And not really the most interesting functions, not, not the most useful here, but class templates start to be much more interesting here. Where an entire class is a template class, and that's what a vector really is. So a vector is a template class. You tell it what type this particular vector will be, this instance of vector will be, and then everything that it deals with will be of that given type. So all the, all the operators here with numbers, right, when I want uh, like at, they will give me my value at that index of the type of student because it's a type student vector. Right? So at will return student. So the compiler knows that when I use dot at, uh, you know, at index zero, this will be a, a type of student. So I can say, you know, first is my numbers at zero because it knows the vector is type student. So when I use the at notation, I'll get that kind back. So in the vector class, it's a template class. So all of the types here are of the type. Again, T is usually, I think, the type kind of shows you it's whatever type you want to give it here, but typically we'll use T. Um, so you can say, hey, this function will return particular types of it here, which is really fun. Um, yeah, this is... The print print all of them, that's a void function. Here, to return the minimum value of that one. Right? If the return type is the template type. So if I want to make a class that is a template class, we'll have a class for, um, what do we want here? Um, we had, their triple minimum was silly, but that's okay. So we'll have a template of type name T, and this will be our class Sure, why not triple? Now, inside of the class for triple, because it's a template class, I can use this T anywhere I want for value. So I can have a type of T for the first, the type of T for the second, the type of T for the third. So T will get substituted when we compile with whatever type I've declared triple to be. Right. And then we can have functions for things, right? So I might have a t, I don't know, get smallest. That'll return the smallest value of this triple type here. Right. So we can say, I don't know, the smallest, t smallest is first. And then if my second is less than the first, then my smallest is the second. And if the third is less than the smallest, Oh, I should say smallest. Probably fine. If the smallest is the third, and then we can return the smallest. Right. So assume it's the first one. Check if the second one. Check if the third one. We'll find which one is the smallest here. They're all this type T here, this generic template type. I don't know what it's going to be, but when you create an instance of the class, we can go and do it here. So I can make a type, a triple of type student, again, if I wanted, students, right? And then I can use that function, students dot smallest, uh, get smallest. Dot, oh, I forgot to put these in the public section, sorry. So we'll call these public. Or no, those, sorry, private. This one should be public. There we go. Now I can say students dot get smallest. And I'll get the smallest student out of the given type. So it lets me have some type that I don't know what it's going to be. Again, I don't know that sorting, you know, smallest is, is the most interesting thing here, but if you imagine how the vector class is written to store a bunch of values, vector is a template type. Right? It knows, hey, you can put things at an index. It knows you can pop, the, uh, you can append, push back, 
throw them at the end of the list. And as we start looking at these data structures, we're going to go into, as we look at linked lists and we look at, um, is that the only one we look at? Oh, stacks and queues, sorry. Linked lists, stacks and queues, those are all template type structures. Just like all of our containers were template types, right? You can be of any given type that you want here. We can do that exact same thing. And now where this gets silly is this is a specific type as well, right? Like when you, when you had a pair of string and vector, because vector of string is another type, you can have a nested template in, template type inside, inside of a template type. That's what we did with that lab exercise. So I could make a triple of vector of uh, student if I wanted. Right, and we'll call this uh, um, more students. We're running out of interesting names here, right? But because vector of type student is a specific type, that can be the template type given to the template class triple. And that's what we did with our exercises. So you could have that deck of pairs of, of string and vectors of strings. Right? I think we went four deep with that lab exercise where we had the lists and the, uh, a dictionary, right, or the map type. Oh my god, I should look up what we did here because it was fun, right? It was a very fun lab. <laughs> yeah, our STL containers. Let's see, we did a map of int of pair of string of vector of pair of double double. Like, that's four layers deep here, but each one of those is a specific type, right? So the map here then takes two types. So you can have more than one type. So instead of just a single type here, we could make our own pair class if we wanted. Again, I, would, I don't recommend writing your own pair class, but we could. We can have a template of type name. Uh, so like this might be the key and type name value. Um, so this would be our pair. Right, we're gonna have a private key. Uh, key, private section, my goodness, key of key. And then we'll have a value of value, right? And then we have like public, we have first and second, right? So we had a key first, and then we had a value second. I think that's what we had in map, I'm trying to remember. That was pair, so pair was, I guess pair was just first and second, right? Not key and value, so the map was key and value. Sorry, so we'll just call this first and second. So first, is our first, and we can actually just make those public too, because we're not really doing anything super interesting with those. So this will be a type of first, and this will be a type of second. Right, we can make our own pair, if we wanted. You give it two types here, and you can have as many template types as you want. Again, once you have three, four, five, or more, it starts, stops making a lot of sense here. But you can have as many of these generic types as you want. So when you declare a pair, then this is our pair, right, of type what? We want to, I don't know, int and string, sure. So, well, pair, our pair. Not to be confused with an all pair. So, our pair, right, of this given type. You can have more than one type that you give it here, just like we did with our maps, just like we did with our pairs in here as well. So when you write your classes, you can go nuts and have them as many as you want. That's the template parameter, the template type here. So, um, class, you might see in older code, it's not really a class though. It really is a type. So, it's ever so slightly different, uh, just a, a naming distinction here. Um, it's okay. Um, so, classes, right, are the, the definition. You can have types that aren't necessarily classes. That's really the, the whole idea. So, you give it what type it is. Not a class, All right? So you might see class first versus type name. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. But type name is is better, just because we like to argue about the how we name things here. Um, so if we wanted to do another one on our own, so maybe something that would be useful for us, right? Where I want to store something here, right? But I don't want to have to do it by hand. So I could make something pretty easily, like a grocery list, if I wanted. Right. So if I made a, a template class here, template of type name, we'll just call it we'll just call it T in here, 
and this will be uh, our grocery list. So we'll have a private section, we'll have a public section. So the grocery list then will have a bunch of T's, whatever we want to go shop for. Right? I don't really care what these things happen to be, I just want a list of things I need to shop for. Right? Then what I can do is I can do a really silly thing. I can have a vector of type T. Here again, I can just kind of wrap around it here. This will be my list. And I can have a way to add stuff to my list. Right? But then I get all this cool functionality out of my list here as well. Right? So maybe then, um, yeah, so we've got our, our T type here. So then I can get values, I can get items out, or I can add item of avoid add item given a T item. If I'm just kind of wrapping vector, it's not super useful, but other things I might want to know is, you know, for which store. So you have to tell me what store this list is for. Maybe you keep a grocery list for three different stores. There's certain things I like to buy at Costco, there's certain things I like to buy at Meijer, and there's certain things I like to get at Aldi. Let's just, I, I like their different things that they offer, their different brands here. So um, that's how I like to order things. So we have a grocery list constructor, grocery list constructor. We can take a string for the store. And we can set my this store to the store. Now we know what store I'm shopping for, right? And we can add an item, and we'll go add an item to our list. So the constructor's job, right, is to give values to all of our attributes. So we should say list, then will be a vector of that type. Right? Make sure we instantiate it here, so it's not going to be null. Nulls are bad. We can add an item. We can take our list, and we can push back the item. And then if we have a string for get store, returns the store, and then a way to get the list, we'll have a, um, or should we just have like a print the list here? Sure, we can do a void of print list. So then for t item in the list, we can see out the item in an end line. Whatever happens to be, we'll just print it up, print out the list here. Sure, should work out pretty well. So I can sort of pair these things together myself without having to use the pair class. So I could just have a pair on my own of here's the string and here's the vector. But now, or I can also turn it into a class myself that now I can just pass grocery lists places. So if I write in an app that lets you store grocery lists on your phone, I can use my grocery list class and not have to have and manage my own list or map of here's the string and here's the vector associated with it. And we like putting names on things. We like putting things into buckets. We like kind of grouping things together and being able to treat them as objects because that makes life easy for us as developers to think about these things. I've defined all the values here and then I don't need to remember what the first value is and the second value is in the pair. I don't have to use the weird syntax for get the first value or get the second value, right? I've, I've put a nice name to it so I know what the store is and I know what the list is without having to have a first and second. So the template types like the pairs and maps are super useful but it's going to take a little extra effort for us to remember what the first thing is, what the second thing is. So this lets us kind of put a name to it and we can sort of use that template type and just pass it right on through. Because right, the vector is the template type, so sure, whatever type you want it to be, I'll just pass that right into my vector. Because without the type name T, I would have to have a very specific type here. That there would be no way to say, hey, you tell me what type of object you want to be shopping for. Right? I think at one point we did classes, we had like an item class that we had. With, we had a taxable item class when we were practicing with inheritance. Did we do taxable item? Yeah. So we could pass that through if we wanted, or it could just be a simple list of strings. That's all I would need to get here. Uh, as detailed as we want to get in our grocery list, we could give it whatever type and just pass it all the way through. Okay. If we didn't have the template type, I would only probably ever be able to do a list of strings. And I wouldn't be able to do any of the cool stuff like using the item class or using the taxable item class or anything like that. Um, so we get lots of fun options here once we make our own template classes. We're not going to use them for everything, but certain use cases that it's very useful to have. Um, a lot of production code ends up using template stuff just because it's kind of fun like that. Um, now I do want to show you, i got to see if I can find this here. So this X, is it the... Primogen, what's his name? My goodness. He had a really funny post. Let me see if I can find him. This guy. He's really good at talking to him, too. 
Um, wow, this guy posts a lot. I just saw it yesterday. This one here. This, uh, this post. This was about having AI write code for you here. And someone said, oh, I've written superhuman code for a critical feature. You can read the code, but very few people could write it from scratch. This is why AI is so useful. And I think absolute garbage, personally. And this Primogen, I can't even pronounce his name here, tends to agree with me. So obviously I'm right, because someone else agrees with me. But it's a type of a map parameter of types of T that extends a parameter list. And if P of T is a P of name, and P extends an enum of array of is required and extends an E is under, like, what is this garbage? This is a hot pile of mess. But you can do crazy things with template types if you want in here. Recursively mapping an attribute of the object never if attribute is not defined in parameters, it's invalid. Handle, handle parameters defined as object without specified attributes. This is not useful code here, right? And his, uh, his whole piece here is replace the code and then make sure you get off my team. Don't commit code you don't understand. I mean, he says they can read it. This is a bunch of nonsense, right? So just because you can do something doesn't always mean we should. That's, that's going to be our, our pretty good rule of thumb here. Um, just because it's fancy doesn't mean that it's, it's good or useful. Sometimes it is. And he says it's for a critical feature. And they, they really got the AI using. Took lots of convincing. Come on, this must be possible. Try harder. What kind of conversation was he having with this AI chatbot? Like, <laughs> come on, bot, try harder. I don't, I, I got nothing. I don't, I have, don't know what they were doing here. But we can do some fun things with it here. Um, so just be careful what you, what you use. That's all, just because we can. Um, yeah. So our type name stuff. It's not the biggest topic, but it's a very weird way for us to think about using things as we go, right? And eventually, actually next week, right, um, we're going to start writing our own classes that are basically what's already in the standard template library, the STL, our, our containers, those abstract data types. But we spend some time looking at how they work so that we know why they work the way that they do. Because certain things are very fast and th certain things are very slow. So we start talking about the performance of our data structures and how fast things run and how slow things run and, and those trade-offs. So when we start designing solutions, now we start to get to more of the sciency piece of computer science and say, okay, well, it works, but is it efficient? Just because it works doesn't mean it's an efficient solution. And so far, or at least if you've had me, I don't care if it's efficient or not. We just want to get the job done. We're just learning how to code. But now that we are expanding our toolkit, we're going to look at, okay, does it get the job done and does it do it well? That starts to be a factor we're going to start looking at now that we know more. So um, figuring out, okay, if I have to add 50 things to my list of items, is it going to be really fast to add 50 things or is it going to be really slow to add 50 things? And fast and slow is a, a little bit um, relative here. Right? We're only talking about 50 things, it doesn't really matter, but as you know, there's lots of things in the world here. So when we start dealing with things on the millions scale or the billions scale, the speed really starts to add up and matter. Right? Just because it works fast for 50 things doesn't mean it will scale to when I'm doing a million operations on this thing. So making sure that we design for performance in mind will make sure that I don't need to go rewrite it when it becomes really slow down the road. Right? Um, so link lists are better than vectors at certain things, and they're worse than vectors at certain things. Stacks and queues are good at certain things, and they're bad at other, other certain things. So we'll look at why, why they're fast and why they're slow. Um, and when we get to searching and sorting, um, we'll finish out basically the rest of Zybooks here, which is fun. And then the last little bit we get to is streams, dealing with files. I think you did some files in 150. We, I think we did some basic files, file input and output. With streams, does that ring any bells? No, do we not? We might not have then. Um, it was last semester, and I don't remember. 
<laughs> so uh, I can go look. But being able to write stuff to files is super useful and helpful so that I don't have to retype the data every time I want to run my program. And I can actually keep something around in a file on my computer. Now, it's very useful for certain cases. In the real world, if we're dealing with any large amount of data, we're going to be using a database, not a file. But there's still lots of uses for local files on our computers and things like that. Lots of fun things we're going to do with it. So um, we are about done with Zybook, believe it or not. So just those last two chapters, searching and sorting and streams. Uh, the ethics piece is just another little supplemental piece I have as well. So linked lists will all be just notes. Stacks and queues will all just be notes, stuff I do in class. Uh, this was our last, almost last Zybooks chapter. So we've got our recursion project, and then our last project then will be based on stacks and queues and using our standard template library classes. We can use the ones we wrote, we can use the ones in the standard template library that should do the exact same thing, right? But we're going through the process of writing them so we understand them better, that sort of thing. Um, and then our group project will tackle at the very end, and we are already looking at the end of April Believe it or not, this is not too many weeks away, right? Because we're week nine, so we've got six more weeks or so of stuff, and then another week to the final, so seven weeks away from the final exam already. We are just flying through the semester. So, all right, I think that's actually about all we need to cover for templates then. Uh, we'll play more with them. We have our lab next week, right? So we'll do a uh, lab on templates. Next week, there won't be a, we won't have gotten through enough of linked lists to do the lab on linked lists. Um, so it'll be a little split uh, for a little bit there, but it should, should work out okay. Um, and then we'll be able to do our linked list lab on 319 where we're doing our midterm review and project solution. Um, that should put us in pretty good shape. So then when we do the midterm on 321, there won't be it. Um, we could probably do a lab on stacks, actually, because we'll have time to do stacks, maybe. We can do a lab on stacks on 326, and that should be fine. And then we get to queues maybe on 4.2. All right. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Things going all right so far? Awesome. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Always happy to chat. If not, I will see you next Tuesday then. Thanks, folks.